Welcome back to RetroAxis. In this continuing series on the Atari VCS, I'm going to install the Ubuntu Linux operating system on the factory installed M.2 uh, disk. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll wipe out that disk. I will show you how to do that through the Ubuntu installer. And then after we've installed it and got it up and running, I will also show you how to restore it from a backup, which I previously showed you in an earlier episode. Let's get started. <music> So if you've been following this series so far, you'll know that I've been exploring the Atari VCS. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button and take a look at the channel and check out the other videos we've done on the Atari VCS. So in a previous episode, I actually did a dump using a SUSE rescue disk and actually dumped the existing Atari uh, formatted partitions uh, and put them onto an image file on this external drive. So this, will, this is what I will use later in the episode to actually restore the VCS back to its original state. So here's my USB stick that I have prepared. I actually downloaded the ISO image. This is Lubuntu, which is a derivative of Ubuntu using the LXQT desktop environment. I used uh, my Mac machine. I burned this USB stick using a tool called Etcher. If you're on Windows, I think Etcher may be available there as well, but there's other tools out there available that you can find that will allow you to write to a USB stick and most uh, Linux operating systems, their documentation will give you advice on how to create a USB stick. So I won't be covering that here. One thing of importance, so you're aware, if you're gonna download a Linux distribution or another operating system to put on your VCS, it must be compatible with UEFI Secure Boot. That is actually a feature. Uh, in fact, you can see that this particular USB stick failed. Um, I actually have the wrong stick here. I have to go get the correct one. I've got three of these that are identical. But here's an example of an error message you get if it does not support the UEFI Secure Boot. You'll note that it says this particular USB device has been blocked by the current security policy. So that's an error message that you will get. I'm gonna insert the USB into the rear slot. On the front, I have a USB receiver. I'm gonna click uh, PC mode. Now this USB receiver is for my keyboard. Uh, you'll note that it's asking me here for a Bluetooth. It's searching Bluetooth um, for a controller, which I don't have connected. But since I have the keyboard, which is really all I need to install uh, Linux along with the mouse, I went ahead and pressed escape to interrupt the reboot cycle and entered the boot manager. And you can see here my Patriot memory. This is my USB stick. I'm gonna hit enter. And we can see now it's beginning the grub boot menu. So if you're having a, a problem getting this to boot simply by hitting PC mode, um, you can hit the escape key or hold in the escape key during the boot cycle and it will allow you to enter um, the BIOS mode where you can get into the boot manager. So that's what I had to do here. All right, so with the live environment loaded, let's go ahead and click the installer. Okay, installer is up and running. All right, so in the partitioning screen, we can see here if we drop down this box, in my case, I only have a single M2 hard disk or drive installed. This is the one that ships with the Atari VCS and it's uh, called MMC Block Zero. So you can see here, this is the designation of the Linux device manager. So it's a 30 gig internal drive. Um, and you note that if you have a second drive installed, there would be an option for, for the additional disk. So if you've installed the second drive in the slot, uh, that'll be an option here. But in this case, we're installing it on top of the VCS without any upgrades. So we're gonna go with manual partitioning. We're gonna click on next. And we can see here that we have all these different block devices. Now in a previous attempt, I tried to resize um, the home directory by shrinking it. There's only about two gigs used. I tried to shrink it down to about uh, 20 gigs. So I had 20 gigs free and I was unable to get the system to install that way. We can start to delete these out. So the first thing you can do is you can actually delete them one at a time. So I'm gonna delete these one at a time. And you'll note my free space increases as I delete each one.
Now, nothing has happened yet. No changes have actually occurred. So if you change your mind at this point, you can simply cancel and nothing has been done. This is just setting the steps that the installer will perform. So now we can see we have the entire 30 gigs of disk free. So what we can do is create a new volume. We need to create one first for the EFI boot. You only need about 300, maybe less for that, but that's about the size of the one that shipped with the VCS. And this should be a, um, a FAT file system. Uh, you can actually choose FAT32, that's certainly fine. Uh, you want this to be slash boot slash EFI, and you need to set the boot flag here. You'll notice it says boot, that needs to be set. So you can say okay there. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is create a swap partition. Um, doesn't really matter where it is. In the old days with, with actual hard drives that had spinning spindles, um, you wanted to be, be a little bit more smart about where you put these, but in the solid state world, it's not, as, it's not as critical. So let's create a swap partition. So we know that this one has eight gigs of RAM. That seems like an awful lot because I'm primarily going to use this for just like an emulation station. So I don't anticipate getting too much into swap for some of the old games. So I'm just going to give it four gigs uh, for swap and set the type here as swap. And then the next I'm gonna do is just create a single slash partition or root partition. Um, you can certainly do this any way you like. I'm just keeping it simple for this example. And I'm gonna select root here, and I'm just gonna use the remaining space. Um, file system type, you know, really again, that's personal preference. I'm just gonna stick with ext4. I'm also pretty partial to XFS, but in this case, ext4 is, is fine. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. It's three partitions, one for your boot, one for your swap, and one for your root partition. So I'm gonna click next, and I'm gonna proceed with the rest of the install. Okay, so the installation is completed. Click done. And it's gonna pause and ask me to remove my USB stick. So pulling that out now and hitting enter. So in my first video on the VCS where I explored the file system, I had made a backup of the entire disk on this particular external USB drive. I have here also a bootable version of OpenSUSE, which I will use to boot into a rescue mode. So what I'm going to do first is actually plug the OpenSUSE environment here into the back. And I'm going to reboot the system. Now as I reboot, I'm going to hold in the escape key so that it loads the boot manager. So clicking reboot, and I'm gonna wait for it to reboot. I'm gonna hit escape. I'm actually gonna hold it in. And it should take me to the UEFI or the firmware's um, menu. Um, interestingly, there's some other options here, continue, boot manager, device management, and so on, but some of these actually require a password, which is locked down. I don't have that password. So I'm gonna go to boot manager, which is available. And I should see the disk here. Uh, you'll notice here it says Ubuntu. This is the onboard disk that I just installed. And here's my USB flash drive that has SUSE on it. So I'm gonna boot to that. So you note know here in the grub, you gotta interrupt the menu before it loads and go down to the more selection and choose rescue system and I'll hit enter there. So while this loads, what I'm gonna do again is I'm actually going to start an SSH server inside the rescue environment and then I'm going to go back over to my MacBook and uh, SSH into the machine and do a screen capture so you can see more clearly what I'm doing. All right, so here we are logged into the rescue environment. So this is the SUSE machine. And so what we can do is first, let's go ahead and take a look at the disk layout. So I'm on an FDisk-L, and if you recall, the, it was the dev MMC block zero. This is the 30 gig drive uh, that is on the Atari VCS. And if you look, you'll note that there are now three partitions. If you remember from when I created the Lubuntu installation, I created a boot EFI partition, a swap partition, and a Linux file system for root. Now what I wanna do is uh, I wanna restore it from the backup that I took on this ADATA drive. So let's go ahead and plug this in and I'll get this drive mounted up. 
So just to test if it's if it's loaded, I can run the dmessage message command and I can see dev sdb. So that has attached. Let's take a quick look at that. And we can see two partitions. Um, I know that b is the one that I want. So I need to go into the mnt directory and make a folder for it. So we'll call this a data and let's mount it. And I created that as an ext4 file system. So we can verify it's mounted and we can go into the a data directory. And this is the disk image file that I took on December 31. So this will be the state of the Atari VCS exactly from the day that I took the backup. So it's DD, you specify the in file, which is the file you wanna use as the image. And you say, this one again is stored, I stored this here in my disk image. And the out file is dev mmc block zero. Now, if you remember, we're not going to use a partition. I, when I took the disk image, I used the entire disk. So that meant that it was gonna take the entire disk block by block, including all partitions. And I also specified the block size for my build as 512 bytes, because that was the sector size. So that would align precisely with how the disk itself uh, is, is set up. So running this command, if I hit enter right now, what it's going to do is gonna begin copying and overriding the Lubuntu file system with and restoring the Atari VCS file system as it was when I took it. So I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna take a few minutes to do this. So I will um, be right back when it's completed. All right, so the DD has completed. We can see here uh, that it's told me exactly, you know, 31 gigs or 29 gigs copied. Uh, it took quite a while. It probably took about an hour and a half. So it was, it was relatively slow. It may vary for you depending on the size of your, or speed of your disks. Um, but for me, this is about, you know, hour and a half it took. Um, so just to ver validate, one of the things we can do is we can actually do an F disk. But before I do that, I'm gonna run what's called the part probe command. This will ask the system to rescan the partition. So if we do an F disk and I list them out, and specifically if I do that MMC block zero device, uh, you can see now I have nine partitions. If you recall before, the Ubuntu partition set that I had was three. So now we can see that this has indeed been uh, restored back to the BCS system. You notice these cloned uh, you know, uh, partitions. One, one is the, uh, the failover, one is the currently active set. So let's go ahead and do a reboot. So in conclusion, what we've done today is actually blow away the um, Atari's built-in OS install another operating system, and then restore the Atari operating system back onto the system, all on the local M2 SSD drive. So that's it for this episode of RetroAxis. If you've enjoyed the show, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time.